Hello and welcome. Today we will be making goat milk shampoo bars. I started making goat milk shampoo bars because a family member with celiac disease reacted badly to regular shampoos, some of which contain gluten. I knew that the only way I could guarantee her shampoo will be gluten free is if I made some myself. This recipe produces a shampoo bar that is a great cleanser and easy on the scalp. It is especially great for those with itchy scalp. The best way to use this shampoo is to rub the bar in your hair, making sure to clean the scalp as you go. The foam is very lathery, but only lasts for a short time. The ingredients for this shampoo bar are olive oil, shea butter, sunflower oil, sweet almond oil, lye, frozen goat milk, coconut oil, castor oil, and essential oils. Moment of honesty here. You may notice that the numbers on the scale don't quite match up to the numbers that I'm giving you for the ingredients. That's because during the filling process, I found that I didn't have quite enough of some ingredients to complete the recipe. So I had to adjust it as I went. So please follow the numbers you see written, not the numbers on the scale. And just for fun, I'm going to add a blooper reel at the end of this video. Okay, honesty over. Let's go back to my perfect video that happened in a perfect world where nothing goes wrong. Measure 21 ounces of frozen goat milk. Set aside to begin thawing. Measure 21 ounces of olive oil. Soap made from olive oil is the perfect skin moisturizer. It is gentle on your skin, has antioxidant and anti-inflammatory properties, and is fantastic for sensitive skin, even relieving eczema and psoriasis. Measure three ounces of sunflower oil. Soap made from sunflower oil is rich from vitamin E. It produces a lather that is incredibly conditioning. Measure three ounces of sweet almond oil. Soap made from sweet almond oil also produces a rich conditioning lather and is high in vitamin E, A, and D. Measure six ounces of castor oil. Castor oil is a humectant, which means it attracts moisture to your skin. It is suggested to only make castor oil a small percent of your total oils, like around 10% or less. Measure 15 ounces of coconut oil. This coconut oil was sitting in a hot water bath, making it easier to work with. Coconut oil is a super cleansing addition that produces big bubbles in soap, but it is so good at its job that it can strip skin of moisture. This can leave the skin feeling dry and irritated. It is best to use coconut oil as only 20 to 30% of all of your oils. Measure six ounces of shea butter. Shea butter is high in steric and oleic acids, which will produce a long lasting hard bar with stable conditioning lather. Heat the shea butter and coconut oil on medium heat until melted. Set aside. From this point on, you will want to wear your protective eyewear gloves and wear long sleeves, as we will be working with lye, a strong base. Measure 7.6 ounces of lye. Lye is basically sodium hydroxide and can burn your skin, so proceed with caution every step from here on out. Slowly add the lye to the frozen goat milk. Add a little at a time, not to overheat the mixture. If the mixture overheats, it will turn yellow, orange, or a brown color and could cause the solution to smell. Working with a little at a time, however, will allow the heat produced to melt the goat milk. Keep stirring until all the lye is dissolved and the goat milk is melted. Once your lye milk mixture is ready, combine all oils together with the olive oil. Add the lye milk mixture to the oils. Using an immersion blender, blend the oils and lye mixture until you've reached trace. You will know you have reached trace when the shampoo mixture becomes thick, like the texture of pudding. And when you scrape your spatula across the top, you can see a trace of the trail left behind. We have reached trace. At this point, you can add your essential oil to your desired fragrance level. I have chosen Young Family Living's Christmas Spirit, which has cinnamon bark, some citrus scents, and a black spruce scent. Imagine drinking wassail by a freshly cut Christmas tree. That's the smell of Christmas Spirit. 
Now we are ready to pour the mixture into the molds. Be careful to pour slowly so you don't trap any air bubbles in your molds. You will notice that the first few bars you pour, the shampoo mixture will be very thin. But as you pour the last few bars, the shampoo mixture will have thickened up significantly. So you'll want to act fast to pour these bars. These are the bars after pouring. The first few bars look flat on top, but the last few bars show the pour marks a lot more since the shampoo mixture was so much thicker when we poured. Store your shampoo bars in a cool location for 24 to 48 hours. It has been 24 hours and my bars are ready to remove. They are pretty soft right now and still moldable. If you're worried that yours are too soft, you can leave them for another 24 hours to get them to harden a little more. These are my bars after four weeks of curing. You will notice that these bars have a layer of white soda ash over them. This happens sometimes to bars of soap or shampoo. This layer doesn't affect the quality of the bar, but if you don't like the look of it, you can prevent soda ash by spraying 70 to 90% rubbing alcohol over it. Place your finished shampoo bars on a breathable rack for four to six weeks until they cure. And now for the bloopers. First, my equipment. I normally use an iPhone attachment like this or a bendable tripod like this, only mine were either missing or broken, so I had to do this. I decided to double my usual recipe. So six plus six is? Oh, uh, But it's April 2020 and life right now doesn't allow us to go to the store easily, so. I don't know if I have enough. What if I don't have enough? I'm off by like an ounce. An ounce is fine. What if it's not? What, is it supposed to be 12? Huh? It's supposed to be 12 mm -hmm. ounces. That's not good. I could measure it 1 12th, double it, and then take out 1 12th of it. I don't know if I have enough of this either. Is that almond oil? No, but I'll take the almond oil. Did you get it? Close enough. Oh, I don't think I have enough castor oil. Don't have enough castor oil. Dang it. I don't have enough castor oil. Uh-oh. Is it not enough? Oh, you need a lot more? Like another bottle. The first few wrong measurements were workable, but not having enough castor oil meant that I would have to recalculate the entire recipe so that I didn't add too much lye. So off to soapcalc.net I go. This website seems complicated at first, but it's pretty simple. You don't change any of the numbers. You just choose the oils you want to use and how much of each you want. Don't forget to calculate the oils using ounces at step two. I use goat milk in place of water. When you're done, press calculate recipe and boom, your recipe comes up and then you can print it. Thanks for watching.